Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to create a minimum variance portfolio with two stocks in Excel and much of this work uh, should be credited back to uh, Harry Markowitz with some of his work in 1952 that provided really the basis here uh, in suggesting that diversification can provide you with significant benefits in reducing the risk of your portfolio and still providing you with an expected return that meets or exceeds holding one particular asset. Uh, this is some mostly referred to as the EV role, the expected return and risk role. It really is the basis of uh, what you probably have seen in, in the textbook is modern portfolio theory or MPT. So today I'm going to go with, with two stocks. I'm going to try to keep this around 15 minutes. So for you guys uh, that if I go a little bit fast, maybe you can always pause the video, go back and rewatch it again uh, if you need to. So I already downloaded some of the data streams and filled in some of the content. The text content will need to build some of the tables just to kind of save on time. So we have two particular assets here we're going to you know base this excel example off one is saputo one is bell canada those are the ticker symbols here and we have data going back weekly data going back until uh january 2016 all the way up to uh today's week uh, second week in uh, november 2017 so we have about 100 observations the first if you guys need to look how to uh download data you can look at some previous examples in terms of uh how to download some of this data from yahoo finance or some other sources okay so two stocks first thing we need to do we need to calculate the returns on both of these stocks and to do that we can just simply take the natural logarithm of the current uh, weekly price divided by last week's price this is going to give you uh, the return for saputo and we'll do the same for bell canada this is going to equal the natural logarithm today divided by last week and again this is going to give you continuous compounding returns there's different ways you can uh, calculate uh, returns but remember continuous compounding is usually the most accepted way in finance and here i'm just going to turn this into percent uh, returns and we can confirm that luxaputo uh, fell on price last week it was 43.99 the current price is 43.91 so this should be negative and you can see bell canada had a pretty good return of uh, just over one percent for for the last week right up uh from 60 80 to 61 uh, 52 so if we just double click on these we can drop these return measures down we drop both of these return measures down we can see the the return measures you can see that really uh, Saputo had a really good week back in uh in uh, july 28th almost uh returned close to uh three and a half percent all the way down you can see you're gonna have this div hashtag div divided by zero exclamation you want to delete both of these guys and the reason why you have that is you have no previous week uh price to to calculate that return so you want to delete those because sometimes they can give you issues going forward the next thing you want to do is i'm going to want to label this column here sap so i can label it over there in the corner i'm going to label this column here uh, bce it's going to help us make it a little bit more efficient when we calculate some of these summary statistics that we need for our analysis so here we're going to see the summary statistics that we're going to need for this analysis uh the first uh four rows here weekly uh returns at variance standard deviation covariance these four are just going to be particularly two for saputo and bce and then down here this is going to be for a portfolio once we start combining some of these assets together so the first one here uh we're simply going to take the average so this is going to be average average of and we're going to type sap remember we named this column right so it's going to take this data stream already hit enter and this is going to be average of bce oops excuse me average of bce let me go back here now average of bce there we go we can turn both of these into percentage formats if you want easier to uh to read and, and interpret so we drop it out three decimal points you can see so we'll do it as a as a had a better year than uh bell canada or better year and a half than bell canada but both have positive returns fairly healthy returns the next is we want to calculate the variance uh so we'll just take the population variance uh at this point in time and again it's going to be the same we just put in sap here 
this is going to be equals variance dot p and this is going to be for bell canada enter and so we have both uh, the weekly returns and the variance it's the risk return measures here right that uh, are so famously discussed in in finance uh, the next we need is the standard deviation this is easy because the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance okay so we can just put uh, sqrt and, and that's going to be of the uh, particular assets variance so we have weekly returns the variance is standard deviation we can turn both of these got the, this last row we just calculated into a percentage format also and so we have those three rows for these two particular assets and the last thing we'll do before we move into uh, really starting to create some of the portfolio is the covariance between these two assets so simply we're going to take this is going to be covariance uh, of the population and simply we're going to say uh, SAP right that's our first array and our second array is BCE okay so two different arrays we have the covariance of these two assets here so we're in good shape now to move into really starting to create uh, a portfolio uh, uh, between these two specific assets and so to create a portfolio we need to create weights how much are we going to hold of saputo how much are we going to hold of uh, bell canada and so we need to understand what that should be and so the first step we're going to put an arbitrary number in here let's say 50 percent uh, we're going to hold in saputo and in the next column we're going to equal whatever we don't hold in saputo we're going to have to hold in bell canada so we're going to have to put a formula in here this is going to be one minus uh, whatever we hold in Saputo. So make sure you put the formula in there because this is important. Don't put 50%. We have to put an actual formula in this cell here. If we don't, things aren't going to work out very good for you. So once we change this cell, you can see that this cell automatically changes. Okay, so that's very important. Make sure you put a formula in there. But we'll leave it at 50-50 for now. Next, we'll move to calculating what the expected return of the portfolio. And here, this is going to be the expected return of the portfolio of, of whatever these weights are here. Okay, so this is going to be equal to, we can use what they call a sum product function. Uh, so sum product, open, they ask for array one. Your first array is going to be the, if we expect the returns. Remember, we need returns and we need weights to, to calculate that. So your first array are just going to be the average weekly returns. So these two here, so from I2 uh, to the J2, okay, and then comma. And the second one is going to be your weights of those two assets so you highlight those two and close parentheses that's going to be your expected portfolio return and again we can turn this into a percentage format drop this out a couple decimal places so your expected returns if you hold 50 50 of these two assets is approximately you know 0.278 percent a week which you know fairly healthy if we change this number here change this to 60 you can see that again holding more support to is going to increase your average weekly returns because they what you know, it has a higher average weekly return historically next we have to calculate the variance of uh, of the portfolio so this is going to equal and to stick here with this form is you know not too too bad but uh, a little bit longer than uh, some of the previous um, formulas that we've used so the first is going to be the weight in asset or in the saputo asset and this is going to be squared okay times uh, the variance of saputo so times by uh, the variance of saputo up here plus the weight in bell canada and again we have to square this here so squared uh, times by the variance of Bell Canada okay once we get that we put in plus two times uh, the weight of Saputo times the weight of BCE times the covariance okay and that's going to give you the variance of the portfolio enter we have the variance of the of uh, the portfolio now we're in good shape and we know from the previous step uh, up here calculating standard deviation we can simply calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio by taking the square root of the variance of the portfolio and again we can turn this into percentage format and drop this back so right now these numbers here 
okay, are showing you what the expected return and the variance and the standard deviation of the portfolio is with a 60-40 split here uh, uh, between uh, Saputo and uh, Bell Canada. If we change this, if we drop this down to 40%, you can see how these numbers now change, okay? And so we want to see this in more of a, an easier sense. So I've already created this data table down here, again, just putting text into these boxes. But here I want to vary the weight in Saputo, so I have from 0 to 100, okay? And I want to see how that's going to impact uh, the standard deviation of portfolio and the expected return depending on what asset mix I put between Saputo and Bell Canada. So here first I want to fill in a couple boxes here so the standard deviation of the portfolio is just going to equal this box here the expected return of the portfolio is simply going to equal uh, this box right here. Okay so we have both of those filled in. The next step what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to have to highlight this table and once you build your table you get to highlight it exactly the way uh, I'm going to highlight these cells here. So exactly like that, once you have the table highlighted, you're going to go up here to data, go to what if analysis, down to this data table, and it's going to ask you for a column input table. And this is what you know we're trying to, to vary, this column input table. And since we have the weight of Saputo over here, this is actually the cell that we want to you know, vary. It's going to be the weight of Saputo. So I'm going to put in the weight of Saputo in this box here in the column input cell. Once I have that, I hit OK, and voila. Okay, it's going to fill in this data table for you, and it's going to kind of show you what the standard deviation and expected return of the portfolio is depending on the weight that you hold in Saputo, uh, and hence the weight you hold in Bell Canada. So you can see here, for example, if you hold 10% uh, in Saputo and 90%, hence in Bell Canada, the standard deviation of the portfolio is going to be about 1.38 and your expected return uh, is going to be about 0 0.2331 per week. Okay, So if we look on this we can see here uh, we're, again we're trying to find the minimum variance portfolio. What, what portfolio is going to give me uh, this portfolio with the least amount of risk. If we look on this table quickly uh, we can probably suggest it's somewhere around 20%. Right, it's Somewhere between 20% and 15% in between these two lines some there so I mean how, how can we maybe drill this down a little bit further we can simply um, go back and calculate what the minimum variance portfolio would be what weight should we hold in uh, Saputo so if I say the minimum portfolio minimum variance portfolio this should equal open parenthesis uh, the variance, and we've got to go up here, sorry, the variance in uh, Bell Canada minus the covariance, so minus this cell, close parenthesis, divided by, open parenthesis, the variance in ABX, sorry, the variance in Saputo plus the variance in Bell Canada minus 2 times the covariance times the covariance so that formula will give you a suggested or will give you the the, the proportion that you should hold in Saputo uh, to provide you with the minimum variance portfolio if we hit enter here you can see this is actually stating that well it should be approximately and I'm just gonna go back here and turn this into percentage percentage I'm gonna drop this approximately 20% so somewhere in here, right? Remember I told you before it's about 20% somewhere in here. Now we should look at this in uh, in the graphical format also. And this is what we're going to suggest. I'm going to show you what we refer to as the efficient frontier. If I highlight that, I go down here, I insert a scatter plot. And I insert this scatter plot. It's going to uh, draw you uh, or provide you this in a graphical format. And so you, here you have uh, your expected return here on the y-axis standard deviation on your x-axis and when we look at this this is what is referred to this top line here anything above this point here the minimum variance portfolio point anything here and above all the way up here this is called the efficient frontier and so you should any rational investor should hold a portfolio of assets that hold assets along this portfolio because this is going to provide you with superior return for the same amount of risk. You don't want to hold any of these portfolios down here because these aren't what? 
providing with the same risk return portfolio that you could on the, on the line above there. That's the 